You are at a lake. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping and singing all around. The trees are rustling as wind slithers through their leaves. The calm waves are sliding against the sandy shores. The perfect day. A splashing sound out in the body of water catches your attention. You see it. Something large disturbing the surface. You're not sure what it is, but it's big, serpentine, and unlike anything you've seen before in a landlocked Kansas lake. A monster lurking just underneath. A legend, locally known as Sinkhole Sam. Inman, a small Kansas town of around 1,200. Today, the town appears to be another one of many of the same size, scattered across a state of 2.9 million. A single stoplight, a small historic downtown, and a distinct local culture. However, what makes Inman stand out among the other small Kansas towns is a curious case of Sinkhole Sam. Ask a Kansan today what Sinkhole Sam is, and you're likely to receive a puzzled look at best. However, this wasn't the case well over 50 years ago. Let's journey back in time to the early 20th century. Prior to the 1920s, several lakes and rivers ran through the lands surrounding Inman. Known as the Chain Lakes, this region was swampy and infested with reptiles. Over time, these bodies of water were drained, leaving behind several sinkholes and lakes, such as the big sinkhole south of Inman and Inman Lake, east of town. Being the only fishing locations for miles, farmers and fishermen began to gather around these final few pools. In these small locks, tales arose of serpent-like creatures dwelling within these remaining waters. These creatures would breach the surface, startling fishermen and passers-by. Some pointed to underwater springs, once sealed off from the surrounding waterways, until oil and drilling operations opened them up, being the source of these unidentified serpents. Fast forward some 30 years later, sometime in late 1952, two unidentified individuals fishing in the big sinkhole spotted what they described as a flat-headed, 15-foot-long, serpentine-like creature with some kind of tail fin. The creature broke the surface of the water before diving back down. Surprised by what they encountered, the two fishermen hurried back into Inman to tell their tale to all who would listen. Word began to spread of the supposed snake-like creature living in the big sinkhole. Details of the story began to morph and change in the ensuing months, and the legend of the supposed serpent was born. The newly named Sinkhole Sam quickly became an ever-growing local urban legend. Enthusiastic would-be cryptid hunters and curious people began spreading the legend of Sinkhole Sam by word of mouth. People far and wide made their way to the big sinkhole in order to catch a glimpse of the elusive creature, and several hundred reported sightings occurred in the following year. Some began to claim Sam had a circumference of 21 inches. Others depicted him with a kind of fluted tail, or a long fin along his back, or even a big, non-snake-like grin. In the ensuing months, Sinkhole Sam gained infamy in the surrounding towns and counties, so much so that he began to catch the attention of local journalists, though in a less than serious manner. Satirical cryptid journalist Ernest Dewey of the Salina Journal, a city 40 minutes north of Inman, published a November 23, 1952 article entitled, Science Set Back Years. Monster turns out to be a plain old Fupengurkel. Dewey was known for his satirical approach to handling myths and legends about cryptids, usually poking fun at the mythological beasts themselves and the people who believed in them in a lighthearted and comical manner. His interpretation of Sinkle Sam was no different. Dewey and his assistant, a fictional Dr. Erasmus Quattlebaum, labeled the creature a Fupengurkel a creature he described as an extinct animal that once lived in Kansas. However, due to its own stupidity and the lack of female Fupengurgles, the species went extinct. And unfortunately for Sinkle Sam, he was so stupid as to not realize he's gone extinct. No real explanation of what exactly a Fupengurgle is or was ever followed. 
but the name stuck among local believers and skeptics alike, and the strange title became forever linked to the elusive serpent. Another satirical short column written in the September 23, 1953 edition of the Council Grove Republican noted that the sinkhole serpent was responsible for the rising and falling water levels at Lake Inman. This is primarily caused by the serpent's need to drink large amounts of water, causing the levels to drop, and once he's satisfied, he travels back to the big sinkhole via underwater springs in order to go into hibernation. After this, the levels would rise up once more. These two articles highlighted the general public's view of Sinkhole Sam as nothing more than a joke, a tall tale told by men wanting their 15 minutes of fame, and nothing to be taken too seriously. This all changed, however, in October of 1953. Mary K. Flynn, a correspondent writer for the Newspaper Enterprise Association, or NEA for short, dove into the mystery of Sinkhole Sam. In mid-October of 1953, the article, Sinkhole Sam, the Monster of Kansas is Cited Again, was published all across the country in various magazines, newspapers, and journals. The San Angelo Evening Standard in San Angelo, Texas, the Lead Daily Call in Leeds, South Dakota, the News Tribune in Tacoma, Washington, the Troy Record in Troy, New York, and the list goes on, and on, and on. In this widely circulated article, Flynn recounts the series of events that took place in the small Kansas town. In late October to early November of 1952, not too long after the initial sightings, two more Inman residents, Albert Neufeld and George H. Regeer Jr., spotted the elusive Sam in the big sinkhole. While driving home one evening past the big sinkhole, Regeer claims to have heard a loud splashing emanating from the sinkhole. Stopping to take a look, Regeer claims to have seen a large, serpent-like creature undulating in the water. Regeer states that, It is by far the largest snake I have seen in these parts. Not too long after, Hubbard claims to have gotten 15 shots off on the creature. Newfield states to have possibly hit the creature twice, with it ducking back underwater before resurfacing again. After the serpent made its way towards Newfield, he retreated to higher ground before it disappeared from sight. It is here that Newfeld claims the snake to be around 15 feet long, with a head 7 inches across. As with Dewey and other journalists of the time, Flynn casts doubt over these sightings. Local papers are giving Sam a big play, reporting that many responsible citizens say they've seen Sam. Others scoff. The scoffers say how could a monster get into the sinkhole in the first place? It's just a depression in the earth that's been constantly sagging and widening since an oil company did core drilling on the site 25 years ago. The believers scoff at the scoffers. They say the area is inundated by floods every so often, and that Sam could have come in with the fishes from Inman Lake or the Little Arkansas River during a flood. Skeptics and believers alike arrived in droves to the big sinkhole. Some wanted to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the elusive beast akin to the Loch Ness Monster existed in this small Kansas town while others wanted to put to rest this near-nonsensical rumor. Mill Penner, a local farmer, recounts his own experience with the arrival of large groups investigating the big sinkhole in his novel, Section 27, A Century on a Family Farm. One Sunday, I noticed an unusual number of cars heading north on the sinkhole road. There were at least a dozen cars parked on the rim, doors closed and windows up. It turned out a neighbor had reported seeing a 30-foot snake playing in the water, and the story found its way into the Hutchinson News, which nicknamed the alleged monster, Sinkhole Sam. However, despite eyes all across the country looking towards Inman, all public discussion of Sinkhole Sam seemingly vanished from headlines. For the next 15 or so years, not a single reported sighting of Sinkhole Sam, nor commentary on the buzz surrounding it, hit the papers locally or nationally. This all changed in the late 1960s. In the early 1960s, rumors began to circulate of a serpent-like creature in the area of Kingman, Kansas, a city an hour south of Inman, killing and devouring cattle. In October of that year, a story emerged of a 20-foot-long snake-like creature killing a calf and dragging it to the Kingman County Lake. This account spurred a series of swamp hunts in the region for the supposed giant snake. In the summer of 1969, the Wichita Eagle published an article entitled, Hunt On for Giant Snake, on August 1st, which attempted to catalog such an event. 
On August 10, Dr. N. E. Spike Ellison, a dentist in the region, along with citizens from Kingman, would be initiating a search that may prove or disprove the existence of the creature from Kingman swamps. This article also drew comparisons between the snakes spotted in Kingman and Sinkhole Sam. Whether this creature was the same as Sam was up for debate, but the similarities were hard to ignore. A farmer by the name of Bill Milford claimed that, while tending to his cattle on horseback, had his horse tripped by the creature. Another farmer claimed that he witnessed the snake slithering across the road. The snake was so large, in fact, that the farmer refused to drive over it for fear of damaging his truck. Despite being over an hour away from the big sinkhole, the description of the snake matched up with the counts of Sam, and many considered the creature to be one and the same. In that same article, more previously unread details published on Sinkhole Sam became apparent. Reports came in of the serpent attacking passers-by around the big sinkhole, as well as more reports of Sam eating livestock in the region. This article also exaggerates the length of Sam and Newfield's original 53 encounter, describing the serpent's length at around 30 feet as opposed to the original 15. An August 3rd article published in the Salina Journal had some more context to the overall hunt. Near Kingman County Lake, organized hunt for big snake, describes an additional encounter with the elusive serpent. Raymond Dunbar, who at the time operated Bevan Service Station in Coasta, Kansas, spotted a giant snake in 1963. This snake, black with white spots or stripes and around 10 feet long, was spotted out in a pasture. Another unnamed farmer claimed that the snake threw him and his horse into the marsh while chasing a stray cow. Bob McQuinn, publisher of the Kingman Journal, provided his own opinion on the hunt. While the hunt is part fun and part serious, he noted that the increasing number of reports are hard to ignore. The only question that remained was, how big is this snake exactly? Ten days later, on August 11th, another article was published entitled, Monster Snake Eludes Hunters West of Kingman that describes the aforementioned hunt. Despite having experienced snake hunters, the party of around 750 people that swept through the Nanesca River Valley came up empty-handed. The monster snake of the State Lake had once again eluded capture. Although the search yielded no real results, Dr. Allison denied speculations that the creature did not exist, stating that he was convinced a big snake did exist because the men who related the stories, including Bill Milford, were generally serious men. Moreover, he concluded that there was a good possibility of a tropical python adapting to the area, and that other game hunters and fishermen in the area said they have seen water snakes 8 to 10 feet long. Outside of one more fruitless hunt in January of 1970, once again led by Dr. Allison, St. Cole Sam and the monster snake of the State Lake vanished from headlines, never to be seen or heard from again. Now that the entire saga of Sinkhole Sam has been documented and recounted, let's dive into analyzing the mythology surrounding the supposed cryptid. In this section, we'll be looking at three specific theories in relation to Sinkhole Sam's existence. Theory 1 will analyze the evidence surrounding Sinkhole Sam's authentic encounters and the mythology surrounding the potential existence of the creature. Theory 2 will analyze the potential misidentified creatures attributed to Sinkhole Sam and the monster snake of the State Lake. The third and final theory will analyze the potential fabricated accounts, falsified sightings, and origins of this cryptozoological beast. Let's first analyze the possibility that the cryptid creature known as Sinkhole Sam existed at one point in time. Some believers in the cryptid hypothesize that the serpent, and possibly its originating species, dwelled in underground springs or pools. When drilling operations set up shop a few decades prior and bored into these springs, they inadvertently created caverns for the creature to traverse through into the Big Sinkhole and Inman Lake. Another proposed theory is that Sam originates somewhere else entirely, and that the serpent came in with the flooding of the Arkansas River. As stated in earlier articles, the number of sightings of giant serpents in the Big Sinkhole and in the Kingman County Lake region make dismissing the creature creatures as nothing more than tall tales difficult. Farmers, fishermen, and passers-by all over the region reported seeing a variety of serpent-like creatures in a solid 20-year span. Two unidentified fishermen in late 1952. Albert Newfield and George Regair in October and November of 1952. Numerous undocumented reports in the interim. Raymond Dunbar in 1963, 
Bill Milford and other unidentified cattlemen in the late 1960s, and the list goes on. Michael Newton, author of Hidden Animals, A Field Guide to Bat Squash, Chupacabra, and Other Elusive Creatures, noted that, between 1750 and 1960, there were around 211 American encounters with snakes 10 to 40 feet long. Reports of serpent-like beasts in Kansas go back decades if not more, if taken into account unwritten reports. Sightings in Arkansas City in 1904, in Lorry in 1912, in Edgerton in 1913, in Parsons in 1931, and of course, the sightings in the early 1950s and throughout the 1960s. While no solid physical evidence has been preserved, some consider the sheer volume of reports hard to dismiss. In 1950, two years prior to the first sighting of Sinkle Sam, a group in Oklahoma set off to find their own monster serpent. This giant snake had been seen since 1935. The group, like with the Kingman County expedition 19 years later, unfortunately turned up nothing. Holdenville, Oklahoma's story, however, is but one of many similar reports from all over the country. It is entirely likely that most, if not all, of the purported settings were cases of misidentification of local or invasive species. Although snakes are common in Kansas, larger species are fewer and far between. Kansas water snakes are able to grow up to several feet long, and from a distance or mostly submerged, might be confused with some other larger species. A Kansas City Magazine article written by Michael Aubrey points out that gopher snakes are common in the region. These snakes have the capacity to grow up to 89 inches, or around 7 feet in length, and are known to swim in waters. Travis Taggart, President and Executive Director of the Center for North American Herpetology noted that, Snakes are difficult enough to size up when they're coiled, but even more so when they are moving or swimming. And of course, the bigger the snake, the better the story. This assertion is bolstered by the fact that Dr. Allison's 1969 hunt only turned up some larger water snakes rather than the massive python they searched for. Many details are listed of both Sinkhole Sam and the monster snake of the State Lake match up with known snake species. The noted details of being black or brown with white or tan splotches sounds almost identical to seeing a Burmese python from a distance or in water. Given that Burmese pythons are native to grasslands, marshes, and swamps, it is not entirely unlikely one found its way into the big sinkhole at some point. In fact, a small town of Lori, only two hours north of Inman, had a similar serpent in their local Wolf Creek Hole. The Lori monster was, in actuality, a supposed boa constrictor python that escaped from a traveling circus back in 1912. Ever since then, locals claim to have seen the snake in Wolf Creek, earning it its nickname. Forty years later, in 1952, the snake supposedly vanished, though it most likely died due to the fact it would have lived past its lifespan of around 35 years. This did not stop journalists from drawing comparisons, however, as one edition of the Hutchinson News Herald published the article, that famous Lorry snake may have been spotted southeast of Inman, drawing a direct comparison between the stories, further heightening the idea that Sinkle Sam was simply a misidentified python. The Kingman County accounts are slightly different, even the volume of the reports from across the region and the marshy, swampy area of Kimmon Lake, it is likely that a Burmese python, or pythons, migrated into the region or snuck out of captivity. Other similar reports of large snake species invading certain regions are not uncommon. Even today, Florida struggles controlling the Burmese python population that has invaded the Everglades and swampy regions, and a handful of reports of pythons being captured in Kansas have hit the headlines in recent years. In the decades-long hunt for the creature, not a single photograph, piece of physical evidence, nor truly verified reports have turned up. If a creature like Sinkle Sam existed in a small pond like the Big Sinkle, some kind of physical evidence or photograph would have surfaced by this point in time. Some might argue that the death of the creature is the reason for this, or that the serpent migrated elsewhere, but this is purely hypothetical. The only snakes any of these hunts have turned up were local water snakes and native species far cries from the purported length of the legendary Sinkhole Sam. The creature has been called anything from snake-like, to eel-like, to worm-like. Three entirely different species that have completely different bodily anatomy, facial structures, 
and overall characteristics. One report compared it to the Lorai monster, while another likened it to the mythical Snellygaster. Some reports gave Sinkle Sam a more traditional snake-like appearance. Other accounts gave it a tail fin and a fluted tail, and still others gave it a large humanesque grin. The size of the creature has also morphed over the years, growing from around 15 feet to over 30 feet from iteration to iteration. The circumference of the serpent has been described as anywhere from 21 inches to that of a car tire, two massive variations in size. The details of certain accounts have also changed over time, likely due to the word-of-mouth nature of many of these accounts. For example, one supposed report claimed that an unidentified farmer came across a snake on the road who refused to drive his tractor over it for fear of damaging his vehicle. However, another version of the story claims it wasn't a farmer, but a trucker who refused to drive his truck over the serpent. Bill Milford was said to have had his horse tripped by the serpent while tending to his cattle, while another account claims he and his horse were tossed into the marsh by the creature. Did Albert Newfield fire off one shot at the creature? Or 15? Did it dive under the surface or jump five feet into the air? An example of the over-exaggerations and fallacious humors in play is a mention of Sinkle Sam in an article entitled Ghosts, published in the Daily Union, a Junction City newspaper, by Ryan D. Wilson. In this 2006 article, Wilson makes note of Sinkle Sam along with other infamous cases of hauntings and cryptid sightings across the state, which notes, the sinkhole near this western Kansas town is home to Sinkhole Sam, a sea serpent who tried to grab a five-year-old from the banks back in the 1950s. Given what was reported in papers at the time, it can only be assumed this allegedly happened after the media frenzy on Sinkhole Sam died down. Otherwise, this would have definitely been included in the October 1953 article, or even brought up in the 1960 Eagle article, or mentioned at all during this period. However, the only mention of this supposed attack on the five-year-old is in this Daily Union article. No other similar account of this has been published. The fact that the initial sighting was by two unidentified fishermen is dubious at best. Neufeld and Marguerre likely saw nothing at all or misidentified a known species. The details of their stories have also shifted over time. The size of the creature, how many shots Neufeld took at it, and how the creature responded all varied from source to source, either due to journalistic error, lack of journalistic integrity, or errors in the retelling of events on Neufeld and Regeer's part. To put it mildly, the Neufeld family was not particularly excited about the attention their young Albert had begun to receive. Edward, Albert's brother, a retired psychologist living in the Kansas City area, noted that his family was embarrassed by the whole thing. Dr. Newfeld also noted that his brother Bert would often tell the story of the serpent as bedtime stories and around campfires to the younger members of the family. However, as Albert's son Brian notes, my dad liked to say the more people who saw Sinko Sam, the bigger he would get, pointing out the ever-growing size of the creature. George Regeer's own daughter even stated that her father had the reputation of being the town rogue and did not believe her father's version of events. Though, interesting enough, she does believe Albert's. Regardless of the veracity of these claims, it didn't stop the story from turning into a national sensation. According to the 1969 Wichita Eagle article, Creature from Kingman Swamps, Hunt on for Giant Snake, the legend of Single Sam was born in an Inman Tavern one afternoon in 1952. Wiley Case, proprietor of the tavern, and giving instructions to an inquiring fisherman, warned against the huge snake that lived in the vicinity. The man, who happened to be a newspaper reporter, probed Wiley for details. Wiley was only too happy to provide glowing details. Wiley relayed the story of the two unidentified fishermen who supposedly sighted the creature, likely detailing either a word-of-mouth fabricated account, an exaggerated version of the truth, or an outright lie. Not long after the story was published in local papers, the reports of the creature suddenly start flooding in. A local mail courier claimed to have seen a large snake in 1942 but held his tongue for fear of his account being labeled a hoax. Other longtime residents claimed that the region was known for large snakes, and that Sinkle Sam was no different. And from there, the story spun out of control. This, in turn, led to the creation of the mythology of Sinkle Sam, as likely nothing more than a rumor that was blown way out of proportion. Or, perhaps it was a clever way of attracting eyes to a small city in the middle of the country.
itself has fallen on some hard times. The previously almost pond-like structure has now been attacked by the enemy. July 15th, 1984. An innocuous public call for information is published in the Hutchinson News. Whatever happened to Sinkhole Sam? This may seem like a strange request, but some friends and I were telling tall tales the other night, and now we have a bet going concerning the sighting of a large snake in the Hutchinson area several years back. This snake had become known as Sinkhole Sam. As the years rolled on, and Sinkhole Sam and the monster snake of the State Lake vanished from headlights, the serpent began to vanish from the minds of those who once heard of its legend. The monster became a fleeting memory, a tall tale told around campfires with murky details. He made periodical appearances in newspaper clippings and online forums, mostly in the form of Sunday school art competitions, as an honorable mention in cryptozoological anthologies, in any number of podcasts or TikToks, and on scattered websites recounting the string of events that led to Single Sam's brief notoriety. In 1987, David Shelley published the article, While Shows Inman's Past, Citizens See Bright Future, in the Mennonite Weekly Review, in celebration of the town's centennial. In this article, Shelley walks us through the history of Inman, starting in the early days of the town's creation around the now-closed Rock Island Railroad, and ending in the then-present day. Shelley did not shy away from discussing Sinkhole Sam either. In fact, he spends a good chunk of the article writing about the elusive serpent that fell out of the public's perception well over 15 years prior. Then Inman Mayor Adolf Neufeld openly discussed the legend of the serpent with laughter and fond remembrance as the pair recounted the legacy of Sinkhole Sam. However, as the title states, Sinkhole Sam belonged in the past. And Inman? Inman was looking towards a brighter future. Today, Inman hardly recognizes the legacy of Sinkhole Sam. In fact, many Kansans have never even heard of the serpent's legend, let alone the wider United States. Despite an Inman museum being open, there is no sign of Sinkhole Sam, what he meant to the community all those years ago, nor any sign of remembrance, fond or otherwise, for the elusive creature. The closest to the name Sam is a tribute to the unofficial feline mayor of Inman from decades ago. No more reports of Sinkhole Sam have come in, leading many to believe that, if the creature existed at all, it died long, long ago. While Inman has moved on from the serpent of the past, that hasn't stopped would-be cryptid hunters, cryptozoologists, and lovers of the supernatural from retelling the story of Sinkhole Sam, keeping the creature alive in the minds of another generation rather than allowing him to fade into obscurity like the Luray Monster, and so many other similar reported serpents in the United States. In 2021, a few students from Hutchinson Community College attempted to hunt for the elusive beast at the Big Sinkhole, but like with the multiple attempts of decades past, came up short. The story of Sinkhole Sam still continues to pop up periodically on the internet. The elusive serpent also has his own trading card as part of Metazoo, a Pokemon-inspired cryptid-based trading card game. And despite evidence of the contrary, people still continue to believe. Whatever you choose to believe, I'll leave you with the words of Mill Penner. Whether the story of Sinkhole Sam is true or not, I know one thing for certain. The legend is real.